Hello, welcome to Viscount Leisure. We're going to do a quick uh, setup and uh, de setup of this van for you just to make sure you know how everything operates on it and how we set it up and get everything working. Um, so, uh, what we'll do is we'll start sort of walking around the van, just going through a few bits and tell you what they are. Of course, we've got our door coming into the caravan there. Uh, we've got a fridge bench just here, so we've got a domestic three way fridge on board. Uses heat to cool, so that pulls in the uh, the warm air, cold air from the bottom, and expels the warm air out the top. I can feel that coming out there because I've got the fridge running in there and have done overnight to make sure everything's working properly. We've got a motor mover down the bottom there, and we've also got a power socket out the front here as well when we're plugged into mains. But when we first get to site, what we want to be doing is making sure our caravan is nice and level. All right, so that's front to back and also left to right as well. So the way we do that is we use our jockey wheel on the front here and we can wind up and down okay and what that will do is either raise or lower the front of the caravan so we get a nice level footing front to back okay what you want is a spirit level or something like that put it on the a-frame or inside the door or on a flat surface that way we can gauge how level we actually are if you need to level side to side you can get leveling wedges and drive one wheel up onto it to raise uh, one side or the other of the caravan to make sure it's level side to side as well at that point there, once we're level, we then want to put down our corner steadies. So we've got one of those on each corner here, as you can see. Uh, the winder for that is in your front locker, and all we do is go into the socket here, and, um, and then we wind it all the way down until it hits the floor. What I will say though is do make sure that we are not um, levelling on these. We level on the jockey wheel and then put these down. They are steadies, not levellers. We will damage the legs and also the floor of the caravan if you do try to level on those. Okay. Uh, coming around the caravan again We have our gas locker now This is where we need to carry our gas and you can see there We've got an LPG sticker there which tells us this is where our gas is Now when we're traveling what we need to make sure we are doing is making sure that the car that the uh, the bottles are strapped in We have these straps here as you can see all right And also the bottle is turned off as well So what we do is we screw down the top here to make sure that that is turned off when traveling of course, once we get to site, we open that all the way up. That allows the gas flow to come through our pigtail here, or our gas hose. All right, that screws into the side of the bottle here. So we are running propane on this one. Uh, screws into the side of the bottle on this hand tight wheel. Okay, so it goes in on opposite thread, not the normal way you would expect it to. It's the opposite way round. And we nip that up nice and tight using our hands. There's a rubber seal on the end of that. So it is a hand tight wheel, no need for a spanner. The gas then flows through here into our bulkhead regulator that's sitting up here and that then turns it into the working gas pressure for the van, sends it through to our utilities. You can see we've got our spare wheel situated in the front locker here as well and also our hot winding handle and our mover engaging tool. We've also got some waste hose here as well, we'll show you where that goes in a minute and also a hitch cover for you as well. We'll have a quick talk about the hitch although we will do a full hitch up with you when you pick the van up, okay. Um, so things we need to know we are running 13 pin electrics on this one here as you can see okay so you need to make sure you're compatible with that even with the even if it's a an adapter but uh, you do need to make sure you can operate with 13 pin electrics um, we have an alco stabilizing hitch head here um, so you need to make sure that your alco hitch lock sorry your alco your tow ball sorry is compatible with an alco hitch head all right so if you need to ask any questions about that please give us a ring um if you've got an existing tow ball you must make sure it is clean of any grease or anything like that so because some tow balls will have some grease on it make sure that's thoroughly cleaned off we've got friction pads in that hitch head which stop the caravan from snaking so we don't want to get anything slippery on those we want them to grip that tow ball nice and tightly that being said as well if you've got a brand new tow ball what you need to be doing is making sure you sand the paint off of the top of the ball all right so that it's bare metal that way those friction pads have got something to grip onto they don't like just the, the smooth paint and it makes it very ineffective we've talked about our jockey wheel so we know about that and we've also got our breakaway cable here as well which goes around our tow ball or some tow bars have a clip for them and that pulls the handbrake on if the caravan does get detached and of course our handbrake in the upwards position at the minute which is on very much like a car we just push it down and that turns it off like so okay moving on round we've got our boiler flue just here so we've got an Aldi boiler on board all right so we've got Aldi central heating on board um, which can work off gas work on electric so um, when it's working on gas we need to be able to vent the uh, fumes 
very much like at home so that's what that is there for so it does get quite warm uh, but what we don't want to do is it obscuring this in any way so leave it so it's nice and free and the air can flow around it so don't cover it up let's talk about water we want to get fresh water into the van that's why we've got our aqua roll just here okay um, that is situated on the floor what you do is wheel that off to your your um, uh, service point on site fill it up wheel it back and then we get our water pickup and we drop it into the bottom of this barrel okay and then we plug this into the side of the van i would recommend pushing this into the barrel first then plugging it into the side of the van that way we don't end up cracking anything because it's sort of a semi rigid pipe on that one all right and that just plugs into the side okay into there and then we are ready to start um, turning our water and bits and pieces on inside from a power point of view we've got two sides to this we've got our leisure battery sitting over here okay so that's providing the 12 volt side to the van that will run the things like our uh, our main panel our lights our water pump uh, our fridge panel things like that okay um, and then if we don't have mains power the gas will then step in and run our boilers heating and our fridge um, if we are on a mains hookup site though, you'll need a mains hookup like, lead like one of these. Okay, that plugs into the side of the van, into the into the uh, the post on site, uh, and provides domestic 240 volt power into the van. Um, if you've got a mains lead and it comes on a big on a big reel, I would suggest unwinding it so it's nice and free flowing like this on a coil can get very hot, draws quite a lot of current, uh, and can end up melting the cable. So just bear that in mind in that regard. Um, then we want to talk about where our waste water comes out from okay so that's where we have our waste marsh on this side so you'll need one of those um, I've got my waste coming out of these two here on this one okay and this is the waste hose that we've got in the front locker there I've got it coming down into a into a Y piece here so it goes down into one which sits so you can buy one of those sit and it drops into our waste master so this is coming from our shower sink things like that obviously once it's full we then take that to our service point and empty it uh, talking about the toilet, we've got a toilet on board, works in exactly the normal way. We do have a separate tank for our flush because we do add chemicals to our flush. Um, so you'll either use pink or green chemical in here mixed with some water and that is purely for the flush water for our toilet. That way it keeps everything lubricated and smelling sort of a bit more pleasant. Okay, and then when we flush the toilet, that's obviously got to go somewhere. So that goes into our Thetford toilet cassette situated here. When it's time to empty it, it will tell you in the van, all right. Um, you need to remove it and take it to the uh, to the service point. All right. Now this isn't coming out of here. So this is quite a good example. What that means is the uh, the gate isn't shut properly on the toilet. So if we go into here and we go to our toilet, just make sure that's pushed all the way over. There we go. So it's this lever here that needs to be all the way over. Okay, for us to be able to remove our cassette. Now that should slide out quite easily. Okay, so just lift the handle and pull. There we go. Out she comes. She's on wheels, as you can see. Okay, and also an extendable handle here so we can wheel it to our service point. There'll be a dedicated uh, chemical toilet disposal point at your site, generally. Um, so once you get there, what we will do is extend the arm, take the cap off the end, and then we press this orange button here. What that does is release the air pressure inside the unit, makes it easier when we're emptying the stuff out of the toilet. I then give it a rinse out again, empty it out, making sure we're getting rid of all the nasties that are in there. I'd also recommend using um, using uh, caravan toilet paper rather than domestic toilet paper. It's designed to break down much easier, and makes it much easier at this point when we're trying to empty our toilet cassette. We then need to reprime this cassette with some chemicals. Now we can either use blue or green, again mixed with some water. The instructions will be on whatever bottle you decide to use. And then we can then put it back. So we put the cap back in. That cap also doubles up as a measuring cap for our chemicals if we need to. And then this just slides back in and locks into place like that. When we finish using our caravan, we always want to make sure that we're not leaving any fluids in the van. So empty your toilet, also drain out your, um, your toilet cassette, um, your, your flush tank. Now there is a, a little pipe up here which we take the stopper out of the end and that will drain the flush tank up here okay all these lockers have got seals around them as you can see i would recommend getting some silicon spray and periodically we just want to give those a little spray keep them soft supple and working doing what they should do 
back of the van here you can see we've got all of our lights high level brake light and also down here don't forget you'll need a number plate depicting the van that you are towing um the car that you are towing with as well and you can see our two rear corner steadies there as well it is pre they've got the mountings here for a full bike rack which you could buy and attach to it just bear in mind when you're adding weight to the back of the van you want to be making sure that we are counterbalancing that at the front Right, that's the outside so now we've got everything attached on the in on the outside we can come inside um, and then we're going to start trying to get water through the van now i've already done this it's already set up so we'll sort of mimic it really um first thing you're going to do is come and find all of your taps make sure they're all closed because what you should have done is left them all open when you left your van last so we're just going to make sure that they're all shut then we need to shut our boiler drain valve now that's situated underneath your seat here next to your boiler okay and you can see all of the pipe work coming in here all right and if you can see that yellow toggle switch just there that is the boiler drain valve okay so it's in the it's in the shut position at the minute but when you get to the van it will be like like this okay so you're going to come in and just flick it down there we go and we want it in that position there what we can then do is our boiler is just situated here so we now need to fill that up with water because that will just be full of air so we've got to push all that air out through the tap so we've got to come to our main panel situated over and above here and we've got our main power button here all right so we're going to turn the main power on it tells us that we've got a leisure battery attached it tells us that we're plugged into mains and what we're going to come is press the water pump button here and we want that to be illuminated all right we can also check our the state of our leisure battery on here as well and when we're plugged into the uh to the car we can also check our vehicle battery but anyway the main thing we want to do here is turn on our water pump as i say now we need to push all of that air out that boiler so come to your tap move it over to the hot side all right turn the tap on you can see i've got a steady flow of water there you won't get that you'll get gurgling coughing spluttering while it sucks all the water from our acarole out there fills the boiler up moves it over to the tap and then once we get a steady flow of water it can take a bit of time so don't panic uh, once we get a steady flow of water we know that we've purged the hot leg of the system or primed the hot leg of the system okay then turn the tap over to cold do the same this will be much quicker because we're not filling a boiler up it's coming direct from the aqua roll all right do it in here then do that in your bathroom even if you're not going to use your shower or anything purge um, prime the whole system get all the air, excuse me all the air out of it that way um, it will work much better in that regard Okay, now we've got water coming to all the places we want water to come into. We we'll want to start heating that up and potentially putting our heating on. So we're going to come to our Audi panel, which is situated just here. It's in the standby screen at the moment. So what you would do is come and turn it on using the on button. It tells us the temperature inside the van. It tells us that we're plugged into mains. I'm then going to wake the panel up by pressing the menu button. And this is the basic screen and really all you really need to know. There are lots of other settings you can go into if you wish to. But I'm just going to show you the basics here. The top one is obviously the temperature in our van and I can change that by using the touch buttons either side. So I can go from zero all the way up to 30. Next one down, picture of a shower that tells me that's my hot water so I can turn my hot water off. I can have it on or I can have it on what they call boost. Um, so the, this will heat it up to about 60 degrees, I think it is in the middle there. If I put it on boost, what that will do is override the heating system and prioritize the hot water. So if I was going to have a couple of back-to-back -back showers or I wanted to heat that water up really quickly, put it on boost. I think it's 15 minutes. Um, it will prioritize uh, a bit of like an override. It will prioritize the hot water. And then once that's finished, that timer, it will then drop back to its normal hot setting there. We then need to decide what kind of power we're using. Are we using electric, which is situated just here with the little lightning bolt? Or are we using gas, which is the picture of the flame? Now I'm using um, mains power at the minute because I've got access to that because I am plugged in. Um, so I'm using two kilowatts of power to power my boiler at the minute. I can use one kilowatt, two kilowatts or three kilowatts. That depends on what type of site I'm on and what else I'm using in the van. So you'll soon get used to it. If you're using three kilowatts of power on your heating and you've got your fridge on, then you put your hairdryer on and you keep tripping out your fuse panel, which we'll have a look at in a minute, that tells me we're trying to draw too much current. So you might want to come in here and drop it down to two, one, so that you can start balancing things out. Of course, the more kilowattage we're using, the more efficient the heating and the hot water will run. Uh, but if you don't have access to that power, then you have to use what you've got. 
Now, if I was on a um, wild camping and didn't have mains power, I could turn this off. So I've got no electric at all. Press this one here, that will light my boiler on gas and provide my heating and hot water purely from the gas. Not forgetting, of course, that we need to turn our bottle on and make sure that we have enough gas to provide our heating and hot water while we're away. If it's really cold outside, I can run the heating and the hot water in conjunction with each other. So in worst case scenario, it's, I can have three kilowatts of power going through my boiler electric wise and also gas as well. So you can do either or, or a combination of the both. Now I know two kilowatts works perfectly here. So just to recap, temperature inside the van, hot water on, off or on boost, kilowattage of my electric and my gas and which one am I going to be using. There are other settings I can go to, set timers, priorities and things like that. I'm not going to go into that now. In your top drawer of the um, of your unit there you'll find all the book packs so if you want to go through and, and, and learn a little bit more you can do but I just basically use the basics personally when I go away but that's all we're going to look at today all right um, so that is that side of stuff you can see we've got our carbon monoxide alarm here and also uh... and our fire alarm we can definitely say they're working my ears are now ringing um, we'll go around the van, just check everything in here. In here you can see we've got a kitchen cupboard. Uh, and we've also got our solar panel charge controller. All right, so our solar panel's topping up our leisure battery or maintaining our leisure battery. Um, and it's doing what it should do, okay? So uh, nothing you need to do with it, but that is there. Moving along, we've got a microwave, of course. This will only work when we are plugged into mains. It's a 240 volt only. When we're traveling, please do make sure you're taking out your uh, microwave plate and putting it somewhere safe. The amount of times we see those smash on the floor um, and denting units and worktops and things like that, it's, uh, it's not funny. So make sure you're doing that. Uh, I won't teach you how to use a microwave, but it's all pretty self-explanatory. As I say, 240 volt microwave, as you can see, we've just got a normal plug socket for it there. Right, good. Uh, let's talk about the kitchen a little bit then. Uh, we've got blinds and fly screens here as well. So all the windows have blinds and fly screens if they open. All right. Um, when we're traveling, make sure our hob uh, lid is all the way down like so. Now this hob has three gas burners, one electric one. The electric one, again, a bit like the microwave, is 240 volt only, so only when we're plugged into mains. The gas, of course, will run from the gas bottle. Again, making sure you've got enough gas and that you have turned the bottle on. I'm going to teach you how to use an oven particularly, uh, but just very briefly, igniter button is in the middle there, and then what we do is we hold it down, press the igniter button, there we go, that's lit. I would suggest when you first turn your gas on, just come in and light one of these, leave it on for a minute or so, again, a bit like we um, primed the, the system for the water, we can get all the, all the air out of the gas system as well, then when we come to turn anything else onto gas, it will light that much better. Separate grill, separate oven as you can see. Um, again, the oven lights in the same way. We hold it down, press the button, and there we go, that lights across the back. Now, bear in mind, this is a, um, a caravan oven, not a domestic oven, so things may take slightly longer to cook than you expect, so just keep that in the back of your mind, all right? In the bottom here, again, we've got another plug socket. That is for our hot plate uh, that we said is 240 volt on the top there. We have another little pantry here with a slide out in there and we've also got some gas isolators in there as well so if we need to isolate the gas for any reason at all this is where you would come to do it for the, uh, the bits over this side. Drawer there and another cutlery drawer hidden underneath here as well. Good. Uh, right let's talk about the fridge. Uh, we saw the vents from the outside so, um, so we know where they are. Uh, this is a Dometic three-way fridge, so that means it will work on mains power, as it is now when we're plugged into mains. It will run on gas when we're not plugged into mains and we're wild camping, per se. Um, and it will also work on the, off the alternator of your car. That doesn't mean it will run off the battery, even though the symbol is a battery. That means the 12-volt system from your car when you're traveling, all right? Now, do bear in mind that that's not powerful enough to chill your fridge down from warm. So if you do want to travel and keep things cool um, on your way to site, you will want to chill it down on the gas or electric first and then switch it over once you're traveling, all right? Now we can change the temperature of our fridge by pressing the button here, you can see, all right? And we can also change what power we're using. Now, on off button there, you can see I'm running on mains power here. If I wanted to then light it on gas, I'll just press the gas button and you wait, you'll hear it go tick, 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 tick and then it will light. Also, as I say, if you light your hobs first before you do this, you'll find you'll get the gas flow through better and it will light much quicker. 
And then when you're plugged into the car, this is alarming at me, telling me no, because I'm not actually plugged into a car, so it's not gonna let me do that. Um, but I know I'm plugged into mains, so I can use that. This has been on overnight, it's lovely and cold in here. I'll freeze the box at the top, you can see it's forming ice on the back there, so we know that's all working as it should do. We've also got a breather setting, so we can push this out, and that means when we're not using the fridge, we can, uh, we can shut it slightly open, and uh, that way it does not uh, start to smell. More cupboards and whatnot down here and drawers, nothing really to report. We've got our kitchen light switch just here. Okay, you can see that does our down lighters. And then underneath, we've got another light underneath here and the light switch for that is actually on the light itself. We've talked about water, hot and cold running water. Again, this does heat up to 60 degrees when it's all the way over on hot. So it does get very hot, so do bear that in mind if you've got kids or anybody about. I mean, it gets to the point now where I can't actually touch the water anymore because it's too hot. Of course, we can mix it with some cold. Um, as it is a mixer tap. 240 volt socket if we want to have our toaster kettle bits and pieces on there. Again, bear in mind that only works, of course, when we are plugged into maintenance. Good, you can see our speakers are just here. We've got another couple of light switches just over the top here. This one here does our over the, over the top lights there, and this one does our down lighters just here. Blind for this one here, no fly screen as that window doesn't open. As I say, anything that opens will also have a fly screen. Uh, a bit like this one here. Okay, there we go. The way the windows open is they've all got little buttons. We press one, two, three, and four. And these are what we call click clack windows. So what you've got to do is listen out for the click and kind of drop it back onto the click is the easiest way to describe it. So one, there we go. Then we look for another one. There we go, and it will do one more. And then to release, all the way back. Now you can lock this on a slot breather setting, so not fully closed if, we, if it's a hot day. We want to allow some airflow through the van, but still keep it slightly secure. But I would suggest if you're leaving it for any period of time, make sure that we are locking those properly. Front windows all operate the same. Again, you've got curtains there as well for belts and braces if you want to. We've got another two sockets on the front here as well. Okay. <laughs> We've also got access underneath here. You can see all your carpets are in there. Um, in terms of the bed, you've looked through the beds before, I would assume, but the, the slats that pull out. And then we turn our cushions over and sleep on the opposite side uh, to, the, uh, to the, um, what we would normally sit on. Uh, and I would always suggest that this bolster side goes up against the window. So flip them over from here and then flip them that way. Okay. And then these drop into the, drop into the middle and say that we sleep on this side. The radiators for our heating are down either side of the uh, the sofas. And we've also got our little coffee table just there as well. And then to put that, we just lift it and push that. Individual reading lights, all individually switched there as well. Stereos just here. Um, on off switch is the source button just there. So we can turn that on and off. Uh, we have a CD player, we've got a radio, we've also got an aux in as well, so with a, a 3.5mm jack we can plug our phones into there as well. TV aerial goes, comes out here and we can put a TV on the side here, that's why we've got a socket and a 12 volt and a 240 volt socket. We've also got our curtains that will go around our diner area here when we make this either into a single bed or bunk beds. Again, the table we use, we use for the bottom uh, to, to make the, the bottom for the bed and these cushions all fold out as you can see to make the um, to make the cushions and then the back bit here folds up and over uh, but um, okay we can show you that on collection but I'm sure you've probably already seen that already uh, let's have a quick look see if there's anything of note nope everything is fine there right so we've got a couple of skylights uh, this one here opens as you can see again it's got a blind and a fly screen all right and as you can see it is open at the minute to shut we just pull it down and then push the button underneath it so then open just pull it back and then say we can have it open slightly or all the way open just remember when we are traveling that we want to make sure all these are shut and locked properly got a light over the top of us here again we can turn that off from just on the switch there this skylight here is slightly different. Um, again, blinds and fly screens, uh, but we push these handles in and then we push them up. That means we can have it going from wherever we want to. The idea is when it's when we're cooking, we can don't have to have the air blowing in. We can have it just going one side or the other, depending on what we want.
want to do and where the wind is coming from. Right, bathroom. Now we talked about the toilet from the outside. So the flush tank sits in this bit here and the cassette sits in the bottom bit there. Okay, now don't worry, it's still nice and clean. So we use the toilet in the normal way. Okay, we then use the flush button, which is just here. Okay, so we press that. And then what that will do is fill the bowl up with some water and that'll be coloured with whatever chemical you put in. And then to open the gate to allow everything to drop down into the cassette, we quite simply move that over to one side. That opens everything up. And then we push it all the way back over to lock that and keep that seal in there. And that's what keeps all the smells and everything in there. So you do want to make sure that that is pushed all the way over. Radiator in here as well as you can see. And in our wardrobe, we should also have the bunk boards and everything for our bunk beds and the ladder. Also our um, LD fluid in here as well. Um, so that is where the header tank for that is. Again, this will gurgle and bubble as you've got your heating on. So don't worry about that if it's making some noises. TV aerial just here, directional TV aerial in the downwards position at the minute. And we undo the locking nut, we push it up and then we lock it into place. We can then use this handle that twiddles and changes the plane of the aerial to try and get a better signal. Of course, when we're finished, we do want to make sure that we are uh, locking that down and locking it into place. That signal then goes through to here, which is our TV booster. Um, so on off switches on the top and then the gain is just here. I would just leave it all the way on maximum. That way it's always doing the job you want it to do. Um, another sink here, of course, hot and cold running water. Uh, the light switch is just here uh, and also our shower as you can see as well now the shower door is held back on this little catch here so again when you're traveling you want to make sure everything is as secure as possible in the van so it's not banging around all over the place so just make sure that that is located as it should do just up the top there all right and our table is hidden away in here okay so we can use that for dining inside dining outside do it for whatever we want really so that's is all there Okay, that's the basics of everything inside. Uh, what we'll now do is sort of break the van down. So we've been on holiday, we've had a nice time. Uh, so we're gonna start to break everything down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and turn my fridge off because I'm finished with that. You may well keep that on because you wanna keep stuff in the fridge while you're traveling home. Just bear in mind when you do get back, you need to turn this off from here. This will not turn off from our main panel up here and we'll end up draining your battery if you've forgotten to do so. So I'm gonna turn that off, turn off my um, Audi panel. In fact, really, you should turn your Audi panel off first and then turn this one off just so that we don't get any error codes going through that way. So that's all turned off. And then what we're going to do is start draining the van down. So firstly, I'm going to drain my boiler. So come back in under here. OK, we're going to flip this yellow switch that we saw before all the way up. There we go. And we can hear that draining away and we'll see that from down below. And then we're also going to come and open all of our taps. We're going to leave those in between hot and cold, all right? That way we're allowing airflow through the hot and the cold leg of the system when we're not with the van. And if we get in a habit of leaving it this way all the time, you're not going to get any problems in the winter because it will just be a habit to do so. If you can imagine in the winter when you've got freezing weather, there's water stuck in the pipes, water expands when it freezes, and we see cracked taps, cracked pipes. The next time you come to plumb your van up, you end up with water everywhere. So if you can leave it in that state, no water in it, boiler drain valve open, taps open, you're not going to go too far wrong. There is one other thing that we do need to talk about that we haven't as yet, and that is our fuse box, which is just sitting just here. Um, so this controls the uh, the hot and the cold leg of our, um, sorry, this, get my words out properly. If I just move this sofa cushion for a minute. Right. So. This controls the, um, the 240 volt side of things and also the 12 volt side of things, okay? So 12 volt is all here and that's where all of our blade fuses are. It tells us here what they all do, okay? Um, so if you need to change a fuse, this is where you come to. We've also got a 12 volt shutdown button here as well, so nothing will work in the van at all. Uh, with this, uh, with this, if this isn't um, on, all right? So you can hide, you can isolate the whole system from here. Then when we're plugged into mains, obviously we need to have breakers like we do here. You'll, these will recognize these, it's very similar to what we have at home. So when we're plugged in, we wanna make sure these buttons here are depressed. So we wanna make sure these are both the charger and the uh, heating and hot water is on. And then these are our breakers, okay? So again, tells you what they do here. Sockets, heating, and fridge. And then we have our main RCD. 
Now, if you're struggling to get power into the van, this is where we come and test it, all right? So nine times out of 10, the problem will be where you're plugged into on site because your site will also have a breaker switch as well. Um, so if you're struggling to get power to your sockets or can't use your fridge on mains, come in here and press that little yellow button. That's the test button. Now, if you press that and this trips out, that tells us everything's fine outside and we're, we're, the, the power is reaching the van. But if you press that and this stays in the upwards position, that tells us that we don't have any power coming to the van. So the problem is either with your post where you're plugged into or your lead or how you plugged it in or something along those sort of lines. So that is what you want to be looking at, okay? Right, now we've turned everything off, we're gonna come back outside and we're gonna start breaking things down out here. All right, so you're gonna to come to your gas bottle and you're gonna turn this off. Okay, and you're gonna make sure it's strapped in for the road. I'm actually gonna remove this one because this is my test bottle. Okay, so you'll need some gas when you go away in your van. So again, hand tight wheel. So I'm just gonna undo this again, the opposite way you would expect it to be. Inspecting the little rubber seal there just to make sure there's no cracks and we're happy with that. Good, now I'm gonna remove the bottle. I'm then gonna take out my uh, my water pump, or my pickup I should say, give it a wheel. Okay, and there we go. What do you want to do is make sure you're protecting these um, these seals, all right? So I was just keeping this in your sink. Um, I'm gonna put it in your front locker for the minute just because that's where we keep everything. Um, but make sure you're not putting anything heavy over the top of that. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna stow your aqua roll, stow your waste master away, make sure your lockers are locked up. You're gonna unplug your van from your post first, and then you're gonna unplug it from your van. That way we're not walking around with a live cable. My colleague's just given me the nod to say he's unplugged it from our post. So I can give this a wiggle and take this out. Okay, and I'm gonna empty my waste master, uh, stow that away in the van, make sure I've emptied my toilet and everything, and then I am ready for the road. Take up your corner steadies, of course and she is good to go of course we've got the motor mover on there as well okay so we'll have a look at that when you pick the van up um, and we can demonstrate that uh, at that point there all right but that is the basics of how your Eccles works uh, and i hope that's been useful so we look forward to seeing you at collection or delivery whichever way it is and uh, enjoy your new van <laughs>